Hello, my name is John Schwartz, and I'm the District Technician and Outreach Specialist for Lorraine Soil and Water Conservation District. As part of our group effort to provide you with environmental educational videos all about water, I'm going to be speaking with you about macroinvertebrates' role in their ecosystem and why they're used as biological indicators to assess overall stream health. What are aquatic macroinvertebrates? Aquatic means water. Macro means big, or big enough to see without using a microscope. An invertebrate means without a backbone. So an aquatic macroinvertebrate is a water bug that we can see with our naked eye. Examples of aquatic macroinvertebrates include insects in their larval or nymph form, such as the mayfly, stonefly, caddisfly, and dragonfly. Other macroinvertebrates include crawfish, freshwater mussels, snails, and aquatic worms. Macroinvertebrates occupy a variety of habitats and play an important role in both aquatic and terrestrial food chains. They can be found in fast-flowing streams, feeding on, and breaking down plant materials such as leaves and twigs. Others live in slow, muddier sections of rivers and feed on algae and aquatic plants. There are also many species that are predators and feed upon other macroinvertebrates. Macroinvertebrates, in turn, are fed on by fish and salamanders, and once these insects emerge from the water, they become an important food source for riparian songbirds and bats. There are some macroinvertebrates that spend their entire lives in aquatic ecosystems. However, most live in the water until they reach maturity. At maturity, they undergo a metamorphosis and leave the water. Compared to their larval stage, many aquatic insects are only in their adult form for a relatively short period of time. One aquatic insect that's pictured on the screen you may be familiar with. This is the mayfly. The larva will spend anywhere from months, most likely years in aquatic ecosystems, but are only adults on dry land for 24 to 72 hours. This leaves them just enough time to mate and lay eggs for future generations. Each year, around the middle of May and lasting through June and July, millions of mayflies have the opportunity to hatch. Sometimes the hatches can be so intense that they can be seen by weather radar. Macroinvertebrates have been used as biological indicators of stream quality for decades by researchers. But why? Well, they're affected by the physical, chemical, and biological conditions of the stream. Unlike fish, macroinvertebrates have limited mobility and are unable to escape pollution. Their limited mobility make them easy to catch and they are relatively easy to identify. Chemical water tests are limited because they only tell us what's in the water at that specific moment the sample is collected. They do not provide information on what was in the water an hour ago, yesterday, or last week. If pollutants were present in the past, the quantity and diversity of macroinvertebrates present would reflect those pollution events. A key reason they're used as biological indicators of stream quality is that different species of macroinvertebrates tolerate different stream conditions and levels of pollution. Species that you'd expect to see in great abundance in higher water quality areas would be the caddisfly, mayfly, and stonefly. These are pollution intolerant species. Pollution tolerant species that you'd expect to see in high abundance in lower water quality areas would be species like the damselfly and dragonfly. It should be noted that these species can also be present in higher water quality areas. Sampling equipment for macroinvertebrates is relatively inexpensive. Common sampling equipment includes dip nets, kick seines, and Hester Dendy plates. When using D-nets and kick seines, the substrate of the stream is disturbed to force the macroinvertebrate into the net. Hester Dendy plates are left in the stream for a few weeks to allow macroinvertebrates to colonize the structure. They may be suspended at several depths, float at the surface, or attached to submerged objects such as boulders or stakes. After sampling is completed and all organisms are identified and sorted by species, simple calculations based on what macroinvertebrates were present and their abundance is made. An ecological rating is then assigned to the stream that estimates the status of water quality. 
Repeated sampling can give insight into long-term trends in water quality based on the changes of macroinvertebrate communities. In general, water bodies in healthy conditions support a wide variety and high number of macroinvertebrates, including many that are intolerant of pollution. Samples yielding only pollution tolerance species or very little diversity or abundance may indicate a less healthy water body. I hope you enjoyed learning about macroinvertebrates and how something so small can indicate big changes in water quality and overall stream health. Thank you for watching. We hope that you enjoy this environmental education video series on water. This was created by a collaborative effort, including Bendix, Lorain County Commissioners, 4-H STEM, Black River Watershed, Local Yaks, Lorain County Farm Bureau, Lorain County Metro Parks, Lorain Soil and Water Conservation District, Ohio Sea Grant, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Local FFA Chapters, the Ohio State University Extension, and Lorain County 4-H.